Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank the Citizens' Assembly and Justice Lafoy for giving my turn the opportunity to talk to you about the status of climate in Ireland. Uh, first, I'll give you an overview on the role of Mataran with respect to climate change and give some data on climate observations with some indications of climate change as climate change indicators and also some projections of the future. As you know, Mataran is the National Meteorological uh, Service and its mission is to monitor, analyze, and predict Ireland's weather and climate and to provide a range of high quality meteorological and related information to help to ensure the protection and safety of life and property of the Irish public. Metaran endeavors to use the state of the art scientific uh, and uh, technological advances to produce the most uh, reliable and accurate forecasts and thus uh, endeavors to enhance the authoritative voice of the service. We are at the moment on a course to prepare a new vision and strategy for the next 10 years. And the five key areas which we have identified are impact-based based decision making, integrated climate services, establishing of a flood forecasting center, and optimized communication and outreach. And, and all these four areas will be further underpinned by robust infrastructure and expertise. On the climate services, one of the key areas we are involved is observations, as you know. And this involves the surface observations, synoptic, climatological, and observations from voluntary observers. We also carry out upper air observations using a balloon ascent, uh, where, whereby we include a radio sound which captures the uh, meteorological parameters in the prayer. We also do some remote sensing uh, measurements using radars, and we also receive satellite measurements from the European Space Agency. As regards atmospheric chemistry measurements, we are involved in uh, measuring ozone, particulate matter, uh, uh, sulfur dioxide, nitric oxide, and also we do rainwater sampling. A key area which we have recently focused on is the reanalysis of the climate data. What reanalysis means is we are trying to fill the gaps in our observations by way of assimilating the existing observations in a numerical weather prediction model, a weather forecasting model, and try to run for several years. In, in, with such an exercise, we are expecting to get a high resolution data set of the order of 2.5 kilometers resolution and one hour with one hour resolution. This project is ongoing and we recently had a launch uh, for the 35 year high resolution uh, climate uh, reanalysis. The other area we are focused is on the climate data rescue. We have old climate data records from the 17th century and we are in partnership with the academia to um, rescue most of the paper data in digital formats. We also have international collaborations as part, part of our, our uh, effort to enhance our climate modeling activities. We have joined the Easy Earth uh, uh, community, which is a group of EU countries involved in climate modeling. We have previously contributed to the IPCC assessment report five and at the moment, we are uh, working on uh, providing uh, data sets for the next IPCC report. As part of the uh, further initiatives on climate services as regards extreme weather events and assessment of extreme winds and so on, we, ha we have uh, started, uh, uh, we, we, ha we have uh, joined three EU projects which are the UFIM projects led by the UK Met Office, the Windsurfer project, which is led by the University of Reading, and the Indices project uh, led by the Spanish. Now, before we go into the details of Irish uh, climate observations, I'll give you a summary of global climate trends and projections. 
We all know that temperature has increased by one degree Celsius from pre-industrial levels, and it's projected that it will be, it will be changed by 1.5 to 4.5 degrees by 2100. Sea level is rising at a rate of three millimeters per year, and is projected to rise by 0.5 to one meter by 2100, depending on the scenario. We also know that th there has been increased desert desertification and shift in rainfall patterns. And there has also been increase in the gla gl glacial retreats and also decrease in Arctic sea ice. And CO2 levels have been rising about 400 parts per million. Now, this figure shows the surface air temperature of five stations in Ireland, which, which has a long-term record. What you can see from the simple trend line, which is red, is that temperatures have been increasing since 1900 by about 0.8 degrees. The black line indicates the 1961 to 1990 normal, and uh, the blue line indicates 11-year moving average. And from this, you can see that the departure from the mean of 1961 to 1990 normal. It again shows the same data in a different way, which basically shows the temperature anomaly. And you can see that for the period 90, from 1920 to around 1950, there was an increase in temperature. And again, from 1980 to the present, there was again an increase in temperature. Overall, it can be seen that the annual mean temperature has been increased by approximately 0 0.08 degrees Celsius per decade since 1900. This figure here shows the seasonal temperature of the maximum and minimum temperatures differing from the 1961 to 1990 normal. Over the past few decades, it's clear that for all seasons, temperatures are on the rise. The maximum temperatures have risen slightly more than the minimum temperature in winter and spring. And the minimum temperatures have risen from the maximum temperatures in summer. The trend in the frost days and hot days, basically these are two climate change indicators. The figure on the left, side, left hand side shows the number of days per decade of change in or the trend in the frost days. What you can see here is that there has been a continuous in, a decrease in the number of frost days up to five. And on the right-hand side, what you can see is number of days where the temperatures have increased about 20 degrees Celsius. And again, it has shows a consistent pattern, which is, the, which is on the increase. This fig figure here shows <coughs> average of Irish annual rainfall from 1941 to 2015. The blue line indicates the uh, annual averages while the red line indicates the 30-year mean, the purple line indicates the 1961 to 1990 long-term average, and the pink line indicates the 1981 to 2010 average. One thing you can sh see here is a, there's a large variability in year-to-year -year temperature, uh, sorry, uh, rainfall. But however, you can also see that the rainfall has increased from the two different averages by about 70 millimeters. This figure indicates the change in rainfall patterns in different seasons. But it's very difficult to say a, any particular trend. However, there is, there is a slight, may, slight increase compared to the other seasons for the, for the summer season. <coughs> Heavy rain and wet days are another two climate change indicators as regards rainfall. In the figure here on the left panel, I show number of days, number of heavy rain days, that is rainfall above 10 millimeters. It clearly shows an increase in number of days per decade, particularly on the west of Ireland. But however, there are also a few areas where, where close by stations show contrasting results. As regards the number of wet days, 
or shown on the uh, right hand uh, panel, it's difficult to make a robust conclusion with certain amount of confidence. Now coming to sea level rise, in Ireland there has not been a consistent or there has been a historically not much of measurement of sea level rise. The closest long-term record we have are from the uh, Newland Station in UK where you can see that the sea level has been rising at a rate of 1.7 centimeters per decade. And this, can, this uh, data can be attributed to the south of Ireland. However, the global sea level rise observed are about three millimeters per year between 1980 and 2010. And for Ireland, it's two to three millimeters per year since early 1990s based on satellite measurements. Now, coming to climate projections. For climate projections, we use climate models. Climate models are a set of mathematical equations which are converted to uh, codes for computers. And these equations determine the, the processes in the atmosphere with respect to time. And for each point in the atmosphere, these equations are solved to determine the, the change which is happening in the atmosphere in the future. So the difference between two points in the atmosphere is called the grid spacing, or what we call as the resolution. So we use global models to uh, 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 simulate global atmospheric, uh, global climate change. However, because of the closer resolution, which is about 100 kilometers, it's very difficult to use them for regional, to determine regional climate change patterns. Because of this reason, we use regional climate models, but by using the cl global climate data as boundary conditions. And this process is called downscaling the global data for regional uses. Now, for the regional climate model projections which I'm going to show, the future climate of Ireland was simulated at high spatial resolution for the 40-year period, that is 2021 to 2060. And the resolution is typically around four kilometers. For reference, the past climate data was simulated for the period 1961 to 2005, and the difference between the two periods provide a measure of climate change. Now, this approach is not without uncertainties. With climate modeling, there can be four main factors which are influencing the uncertainties. Number one, we have to quantify the natural variability. Number two, the climate simulation depends upon how we formulate the mathematical models. Number three, it also depends upon the resolution which we use in the climate model. Number four, it also depends on the atmospheric composition scenarios, which is a huge uncertainty. So to address this uncertainty, we use an approach called multi-ensemble modeling approach, whereby several models are used to quantify the confidence of our simulations. In the, in the results which I'm going to show, we have used five different climate, global climate model, model data sets, and this has been used with three different regional climate models and with various different uh, emission scenarios. Through this ensemble approach, the uncertainty to a large extent can be quantified and which could pro provide a measure of a confidence in the predictions. And the different scenarios which I mentioned now have been for simple city, we have quantified into medium low emissions and also as a high emission category. Overall, we have used 29 high emission data sets and 21 medium to low emission data sets which is relatively a good ensemble data set for climate change studies. Before I show you results from a regional um, uh, modeling studies, I will point you 
to some of uh, a animation which shows the change in global temperatures as simulated with the EC Earth model. What you can see is that on the left-hand panel, we see a scenario for uh, the low emissions, whereas for the right-hand side, the scenario for a high emission. What you can see in the lower panel is the, um, the, the blue line, which is showing the observations, whereas the red line showing the simulations for the two different uh, scenarios. What gives us confidence is that for each of the scenarios, we can see that the ensembles are, weight, are quite close together. Now, coming back to the regional uh, modeling and uh, results. The mean annual temperatures shows a change from one degree to 1.6 for both the uh, uh, scenarios. And the large changes are seen in the east of the country. And this panel shows the summertime day temperatures where you can see a variability up to 2.6, particularly in the southwest of the country. And the winter nighttime temperatures are expected to vary up to 3 degrees Celsius. Now, this figure shows the projected change in uh, frost days for both uh, medium low emissions and high emissions. And overall, for the entire country, we can expect something like 50% of dec decrease in frost days. The annual precipitation change is about 10% maximum. And the largest changes have been seen during uh, the summer, summer, summer time. And, but however, there's a change in the number of increase of very wet days during autumn and winter. The, the number of wet days have drastically or ch changed over these two seasons. But overall, the annual, uh, annual rainfall remains constant or very small in change. Uh, summary of future projections now. Mean temperatures are expected to increase by 1 to 1.6 degrees by mid-century with the strongest signal seen in the east. Warming is enhanced for the extremes with summer daytime temperatures projected to rise up to 2 degrees and lowest nighttime temperatures to rise up to 2 to 3 degrees in winter. The average over the whole country, the projected uh, number of frost days is to decrease by 50%. And uh, large decreases of rainfall are expected in average uh, for spring and summer. The largest drying is expected during uh, summer. The frequency of heavy precipitation events shows notable increases of up to 30%. And I would like to acknowledge the contribution by uh, Seamus Walsh, the Head of Climate and Observation Division in Materan, and also Dr. Dr. Paul Nolan, EPA Research Fellow, Materan, uh, working at Materan, as well as the Irish Center for High-End Computing. Thank you.